I'm going to take us through the first uh, couple of items, uh, and then uh, and then and then uh, turn it over to Tim uh, and others who will update us on uh, financials and uh, and a few other things. So, great. So, uh, here we go with the regular mm -hmm. presentation, and I'll go ahead and let you keep going, Adam. Yeah, exactly. That that'd be great. Um, so as you see, we've got uh, a number of uh, updated items. The first thing I want to do is we've got two new board members. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm not sure if Annie's on yet, uh, but I want to thank Annie and the, uh, and the rest of the nominations committee. This is one of those things that you think is, you know, sort of a couple of phone calls and you round people up and you're done. And uh, it's one of those things where the board actually has a pretty rigorous process uh, in terms of thinking about, you know, what are the criteria that we're looking for, who might fit that criteria, a series of conversations with folks, and obviously people need to decide that, you know, uh, Drupal is, is a place where they want to uh, spend part of their time as uh, active community volunteers giving back. Uh, so this is a, a significant process uh, in, in my experience, and I'm, I'm just really pleased. Um, we've got two new board members, uh, Luma and Vishal, and uh, and um, I saw that I saw Vishal's name, and I can't remember if I saw Luma's name on. But maybe if the two of you could yes, just Luma's here as well. Say, okay, maybe if the two of you could just sort of say hello and uh, just tell just a, a minute about yourselves. You know, sort of your introduction to the Drupal universe. I think that would be great. Awesome, Luma. Why don't you go first? Good morning. Um, I'm delighted to join you guys at 7 a.m. on a brisk uh, Wednesday morning here in San Francisco. I, um, I got introduced to uh, Drupal when we were looking at replacing our homegrown um, content management system. And, um, you know, given how, how intricate our internal environment was, quite frankly, Drupal was the only one that was flexible enough to really meet our needs. Um, and it did not take long for us to be able to swing a fair amount of um, very uh, strong opinions across the organization that um, going open source was going to be the way um, to go moving forward. And, I, and I'm happy to report that as a result, we've actually paved the way for a lot more of the technologies within Schwab to go open source as well. So we did some, um, some what do you call it? Uh, um, yes, there you go. There you go. But, uh, but I've been in the financial services um, industry for quite some time, um, for over 20 years. Um, uh, 18 years, 18 of those years have been in the digital space, um, specifically within content management of the, our, um, of all of our prospect uh, experiences. And so I'm delighted to be able to join you guys now, um, and really just learn from you because you've You've brought this um, movement a long way in the same amount of time, um, and um, I'm excited to be a part of it. So thank you. Okay, Vishal, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Good morning to all of you, if you are able to hear me out. Yep. Okay, so uh, my name is Vishal. Uh, I got introduced to Drupal around six years ago uh, when I took the open source uh, as the uh, group within Data Consultancy Services, one of the system integrators uh, in, in, in the world. Uh, and uh, ever since it has kind of uh, excited me and also intrigued me with the kind of uh, community uh, that Drupal has. Uh, so uh, we have been working a lot around Drupal, both internally as well as externally. Uh, but more than that, I'm excited to be there uh, as a part of this particular team and, and see how, what two cents I can contribute uh, to, to the cause of Drupal, uh, so to speak. All right, well, again, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And, you know, I, I'm really excited that you all are on the board. Uh, and again, you know, uh, uh, Annie and the nominating committee, it's largely thankless behind the scenes work and it's, and, and it is incredibly time consuming. And I just want to express my appreciation again uh, to the folks on the nominating committee for, for just doing a, a, you know, a fantastic job uh, identifying Luma and Vishal and, and bringing them on the board. Okay. Uh, next uh, topic. Yes. Yay. <laughs> a 
couple extra well not a board member <laughs> <laughs> yeah but june was recently recently uh born to annie miller and um has joined the family and we just wanted to say a, a brief public congratulations um i know that um annie may not actually be able to join right at the moment but we want to acknowledge that and um and say that that's uh just wonderful news and we're we're very pleased to see June in the world. Um, and just one more, um, our, the uh, Drupal Association Director of Revenue, Carrie Lacina, just had her baby on Saturday. Um, Lila just joined the world. Uh, new new Drupalers. Um, uh, we're going to get them uh, indoctrinated into the community as soon as we can. <laughs> Send those Drupal onesies over and, uh, and get them to join us. So um, after the, that brief insertion, I'll, I'll hand it back over to you, uh, Kevin. Okay, so I want to give everybody uh, an update, as you all know, at the um, uh, towards the uh, end of uh, September. Uh, Megan, who, who is our longtime executive director and, and had really grown up inside of uh, Drupal professionally, uh, left us uh, uh, to uh, continue uh, working on open source, uh, but at Google. Uh, and uh, as you all uh, uh, probably are aware, as part of our succession plan, uh, uh, Tim was set to be our uh, interim executive director, and I'm, uh, and you know he's doing a great job. The team has continued to do a great job, and um, uh, and I'm just really pleased with where we are. Obviously, we do need to conduct a search to uh, to find a, a replacement. Um, and uh, so, what has taken place between you know over the last uh, 30 days or so, um, uh, or 60 days, I guess it is. Wow. Times when it's flown by, um, but at any rate, uh, what we the board uh, uh, met and formed a search committee. Uh, it's customary for whoever the board chair is, which happens to be me, uh, to uh, to also chair a search committee for an executive director. So I've agreed to do that, and um, obviously we wanted uh, you know a nice cross section of the board, uh, and we also wanted uh, representation from the staff. Uh, so it you know made sense to uh, ask Tim uh, to to sit on the uh, search committee as well, and no um, uh, you know Tiffany Ferris. Um, she is a, a longtime board member, long time long time uh, contributor uh, to Drupal, and I think as a function of her sense of of history and sort of executive presence and sensibility. There was a, a general sentiment that it would be good to have somebody who is not on the board, but you know, who has you know a, a wide range of experience. And Tiffany certainly fits that bill. So that's the uh, search committee uh, that the board uh, has appointed. Uh, we also went out and interviewed uh, a number of firms um, and uh, uh, selected uh, 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 Layman Associates. Uh, Jan Layman, who's the principal of the firm, uh, is directing our search. Um, and uh, she was the unanimous uh, first choice of the search committee. So that's great when that happens. Um, and uh, so I think we're, we're all feeling really good uh, about uh, uh, in terms of, um, uh, so right now they are working on a uh, profile, which, uh, uh, which uh, the board will have an opportunity to talk about. And then once that profile is up, which uh, we anticipate will be in the next week or two, uh, then people can actually start to apply. Uh, and obviously the search firm will also go out and uh, solicit people um, who uh, they think will be a good fit. Um, we're not quite sure how long a search is going to take. Um, the, um, it, it could take three months, it could take nine months. Um, so uh, we're asking for everybody's uh, uh, patience in the meantime. Obviously, we want to find a great candidate rather than uh, move as quickly as we possibly can. So while I think we will move along, again, we want to make sure that we find somebody great. Obviously, we will publish uh, as broadly as we possibly can uh, the, uh, the criteria and how people can apply so that folks who may be interested uh, can do so. Uh, so that's kind of where we are uh, right now. Uh, in terms of in terms of the search process, and I think Tim, the rest of the agenda is yours or others, right? Yeah. So I just want to run through quickly the committee updates and some of the procedural items uh, that are sort of typical for our board meetings, really quickly, and give the chairs just a brief opportunity if they want to add additional comments uh, before running into the association uh, staff updates. 
Um, so just going through this as quickly as we can. Uh, the Governance Committee uh, met a few times since our last meeting, um, focusing on assembling canonical lists of local and regional leaders to move forward the initiative to create local associations that can work in concert with the DA as the global association. Um, and is continuing to organize local country splash awards and create governance around that with the intent to bring the global splash awards event to DrupalCon Seattle. Um, Michelle, do you want to add any quick commentary or should I keep running through? I know we're relatively short on time. Michelle may not be on yet. I'm not sure. He, I, I heard he was caught. I, 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 do, I do see him on the participant list, ah. but he may not be able to speak where he is. So I'll just go ahead and keep going. Okay, um, yeah, here I am. Oh, good. It's unusual for Michelle not to have a comment. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have a quick update. Well, the good thing is in the Netherlands, we just, uh, the local association hired a marketeer this year to do uh, a lot of marketing and PR for Drupal. And this is now being copied by Belgium as well. So Belgium is going to hire a marketeer um, in 2019. Uh, to set up local marketing, a local marketing initiative. Uh, so this is good. This is moving forward. If we can copy this to other countries, that would be great. This is basically the, the, the roadmap we've set aside for us. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. All and right. I know that that work is yeah. uh, uh, together with the Promote Drupal work in general is trying to create a sort of global coordination around the marketing efforts for Drupal. And I think that's really valuable. We'll have more to say a little bit later in the presentation on the Promote Drupal effort. Um, for the Finance Committee, which is chaired by Jacob Redding, um, this committee meets monthly to review financial statements. So again, they've met several times. Um, I've got, we've, we've got some great feedback on some operational improvements and improvements in finances. Uh, we'll have an update from Andrew Saban, a Director of Operations, a little bit later. Um, and so that this committee focused their time on reviewing some new formats for financial statements and our dashboard proposed budget and 2019 cash flow recently. Um, so there's a lot of good material there. Um, Jacob, if there's anything you want to add, feel free. No, I don't think at this time there's anything to add. I'll wait till we get to the finances. Um, okay. I think the one thing I'll add is we're very happy to have Angie on board and she's done some extremely great work. So yeah. um, we, we, we love the new formats. Yeah, it's been tremendous to have Angie on the team. And I think, uh, I think everyone will see that as we go into her update in a moment. So. Awesome. Quick update from Revenue Committee, which is chaired by Ingo. Um, this committee did not meet since the last uh, meeting, but has been in communication regarding the launch of an upcoming program. We'll be talking about, about that a little bit more in the executive session because it's not quite ready to take public yet, but there's some interesting news there and a few other things that have been uh, developing in the meantime. Um, so uh, 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 we'll look forward to those updates in the future. Um, Ingo, there's probably not anything to add, but if you do want to drop in anything else, please do feel free. No, nothing to add. Thank you. Thank you, Ingo. Um, for the nominating committee, this is chaired by Annie Miller. Um, Annie is um, possibly listening in by phone, but she did let me know she wasn't able to immediately uh, join the call, so I'll run through this update quickly. So obviously the committee concluded their work on the last round of candidates, and again, we're thrilled um, to have uh, Vishal and Luma joining us uh, on the board. It's wonderful to have um, more experience from uh, both from a system integrator perspective and from an end user organization perspective um, and people who are uh, just sort of tied into the open source world. Um, there was the potential for one additional seat. Uh, the decision was made not to fill that seat until the next round of nominations. So there's one available seat that can be inclu included in the next one. Um, and then um, we also want to just put out the call uh, that your suggestions for the next round of nominations that will take place next year, um, next summer and fall, um, are still welcome and needed even starting now. Um, the process for vetting candidates can easily take, um, you know, six months to a year. So it's a process that's always moving, even though we're just welcoming new members, we're always in the process of looking for more. Uh, so Annie has requested that uh, if you have thoughts or people you'd like to nominate um, for potential consideration to join the board, please email the members of the nominating committee. And the board packet has the names of who those are, or you can reach out to me if you need the contact information. Um, so those are our committee updates. The other thing is, um, as part of our standard procedural operations, we do need to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Um, so we have our public uh, 
board meeting minutes from uh, Drupal Europe. Um, and if anyone would like I think it's my job to say yes, I, need a, I need a motion to approve the minutes. And Audra, I'm assuming you're hanging out there taking minutes this time, right? I'll uh, make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think that was George. Um, and I need a second. This is Jacob. I'll second the motion. Okay. All, all those in favor say aye or put up your thumb. <laughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The motion passes. Great. I've discharged my responsibility. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. All right. So we're going to roll into uh, Drupal Association financial updates. And I'm actually going to invite uh, Angie, who we just mentioned earlier before, to speak a little bit about this. So I'll go ahead and switch over to the first slide, Angie, and you just let me know when you want me to keep moving through. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Angie, and I've been with the organization since the beginning of September. Um, so I've, I've got a background, just quickly, a little bit about myself. I have a background in nonprofit finance and HR. Um, and I've been um, in this field for about 15 years. So I'm coming with um, some experience from several different types of 501c structures. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, Tim, if you wanna go to the first slide. So this is our new dashboard report, the first slide of our new dashboard report um, that I created for the organization that hopefully will give a little bit uh, of a narrative um, visually uh, about where we are as an organization. So this first slide is all about cash. And I'll talk a little bit about each of these um, and keep us moving along here. But this first shows our cash position at the end of October. Um, and in the blue, you see our unrestricted cash, um, both our total and then what our goal was um, for this uh, actually at any given time in the year, our goal is 15% of the budgeted gross revenue um, is unrestricted. So we're really close to meeting that goal, which is uh, good. Um, and actually you'll see in the next slide that we're continuing um, to see growth in that through the through year end. Um, and then this top part on the first slide, um, first chart is our restricted cash um, that we have on hand. And to the right, you can also see how that restricted cash breaks down. So um, a good chunk of that is money that is for um, next year's uh, DrupalCon in Seattle. So sponsorships and ticket sales that have come in and currently are sitting as prepaid cash um, on our balance sheet. Uh, we've got a new restricted classification called Promote Drupal. So you can see that broken out in Hopefully you can see the different uh, shade of red there. And then um, we still have so many from our different camps that we act as fiscal sponsor for. So that's how that breaks out. And then available funds for general operations um, in blue. And moving forward. So as I said, for cash, you can see the green line here is our 2018 cash. Um, and it's trending upward. And part of that is simply due to opening registration for Seattle a bit earlier than we have in previous years. So that gives us a bit of a bump up. And we've also had some really great um, activity by the revenue team um, on sponsorships as well. So that's contributed to um, an increase in our cash trend line. This next chart is um, our actual cash um, sort of projected balances. Um, which is really just based on um, timing of, of when we think inflows and outflows of cash will happen. So it um, can vary a, a bit, uh, the actual to projected there, um, but generally it's looking quite good. And then our projection of what the restricted balance will be as well as there in red. So that takes us to the end of December and uh, next month we'll see this continuing on into 2019. And Tim, you can move forward. And then um, this last slide, I believe it's our last slide, just shows our ratio of revenue, how much of it came from uh, DrupalCon 2018 versus all other types of income. So you can see the ratio there 
is skewed slightly toward about 55, a little more than 55% of our revenue for the year came from um, the DrupalCon 2018. And then on our, our very last chart here, you can see the very first column shows net income as of October. The second one shows our original budget. The third one shows what we reforecasted for. And then the last one is our projected net. So we're coming in significantly better than um, what we had originally budgeted. Uh, maybe not quite as high as we'd hoped after a reforecast, but um, we have a few one-time expenses at the end of the year um, that um, is part of why it's slightly less than what we had uh, reforecasted, but we're very pleased with where we're landing for the year. So um, that's really good news. Um, and I think that might be the, the last chart. I think it is, yeah. So that's thank, it. You, thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, so I'll move into updates about DrupalCon and where some things are at there. Um, firstly, um, uh, you know, Seattle is obviously coming up in April. It's the next big event in North America. Um, the accepted sessions have been announced um, and the actual uh, schedule of sessions will be coming on December 14th. Um, this is something we're really excited about. Of course, there'll be lots of messaging and promotion um, to, to, uh, to, to promote the event and, and get it moving. Um, we also, just last week, um, uh, traveled to Vienna to meet with Colony Congress, who are our partners to operate DrupalCon Amsterdam in 2019. And here's a photo from that event where you can see Drupal Association staff, Colony staff, and community members of the advisory committee who all came together to um, spend a two-day deep dive on kind of the scope of the event, um, on um, some possible adjustments and, and changes to formats and ways to um, bring in new audiences to the European event. Um, it was a really great conversation. It was a great two-day um, experience, I think. Um, Kony had already previously attended both DrupalCon Nashville and Drupal Europe, so they're already getting well tied in to what the feel of the events is like, what the programming format is like, and what the culture of the community is like. Um, so I think um, it was very, very positive. And if you saw some of the, uh, the tweets from Gabor, for example, um, I think the, the feeling is, is really good right now. So we'll be continuing to meet with them on a regular basis um, uh, to coordinate um, what's going on, uh, to help do their integration uh, when they are ready to begin things like their own call for papers and ticket sales. Um, and so there'll be more news as that develops. Uh, finally, just a reminder, uh, at last DrupalCon, we also announced that in 2020, uh, the, the North American DrupalCon would be happening in Minneapolis. There's not much news to say yet, but I just wanted to put out that reminder again to know that that's coming up. I'm really excited about it. Um, next, I'd like to run into some Promote Drupal updates. Um, just a few uh, items to touch on uh, with more to come. Uh, I think the first thing to say is that Rebecca and the volunteer team have been meeting uh, quite frequently um, to discuss a kind of the uh, game plan and outline for Promote Drupal, um, as was uh, an overview was given at Drupal Europe of, of kind of the current state of things and the collaboration tools that were put together to create some global collaboration. And there's some key materials that are being assembled to really make this work. Um, so one of the first initiatives was to create a brand book uh, for Drupal, and this is brand and logo guidelines. There's a public draft already available, and there's a first revision already planned. Um, this is basically a set of guidelines so that we can unify the look and feel of promotional materials um, across um, agencies who might want to use these resources, across local communities, across local associations in different countries. Um, it's a great uh, selection of material that helps us create a consistent brand message for Drupal across all of the channels and all of the regions in which uh, we'll be talking about it. So that draft is certainly something that you can take a look at, um, and uh, there's some really good material there. The next revision is going to include a vision statement for Drupal's market position that's been based on a series of interviews that took place um, uh, in September and October, um, and that'll be integrated soon um, uh, to further update uh, that brand book. Um, in addition, um, so to, yeah, on top of um, kind of creating materials, we also have to create a place for materials to live. Um, and so 
uh, there's a, a, a wider effort to um, uh, enhance the community portal on Drupal.org, Drupal.org slash community, and provide uh, new ways to move through the user journey um, and identify who you are, what you want to participate in, um, and how to get there, how to get in touch with the right people. So there's this find your place uh, kind of menu that has a variety of options. There's more than just what you can see here. This is just what would fit on the slide um, to, to help new members of the community orient, orient themselves and, uh, and how, how to get oriented to the community. Um, and for example, each one of these expands and has some options for you know, diving deeper into, um, in this case, for example, looking for regional groups or looking for communication channels. Um, and yeah, there was um, this UI was inspired by, um, at the Splash Awards in Drupal Europe. Um, there was a similar UI by one of the Splash Award winners. Um, and uh, it was very inspirational and that opportunity to see and share great case studies is really helpful for, um, for us and everyone in the community to find new ways to, to move forward with these things. Um, I wanna jump into some Drupal.org updates next. Um, so first the GitLab update. So right now we are furiously in the process of running and rerunning migration tests in the staging environment. Um, we actually, um, behind the scenes, we have the, um, we've hooked up uh, in production, the version control GitLab API, which is the kind of back end bones of, uh, of how Drupal.org will interact with GitLab um, and begun the process of user syncing and things like that. So these are all part of the phase one process. Integration points are really promising and we've had great help from the GitLab team. They've been wonderful partners resolving issues as we found them, um, typically things like needing some additions to their API and things like that. So our commitment to complete phase one was Q4 of 2018. We're sort of halfway there. We have some elements of what was in phase one um, in production. Um, we may slip that by about a week for some of the public facing things like the code facing stuff because we don't necessarily want to deploy over the winter holidays. Um, but at, uh, at the very least, we'll have it at the beginning of January. Um, and there's a detailed update in this issue if you want to see all the activity that's been going on. Um, and then there's some really powerful uh, stuff in there. Finally, I wanted to slip in um, some preliminary PHP version telemetry based on an October data sample. So we actually recently discovered that because Drupal 8 uses um, Guzzle as part of its um, uh, installation process and update process and things like that, um, it actually collects some data that we didn't know we had. So for example, it has PHP version information. Um, so uh, we're actually in the middle of building out some more detailed reporting mechanisms. Uh, but we did a quick example just from the October data set to just see for all the sites that contacted uh, us in, um, for all the sites that contacted us in October about update information, what versions of PHP are they running? And this is all the Drupal 8 sites. And what we find is it's um, surprising to me at least, it's only about 20% of Drupal 8 sites that are still in a PHP 5 environment. So as we talk about deprecating, um, as we talk about deprecating PHP 5, uh, in upcoming versions of Drupal, um, we have maybe, you know, not an insignificant uh, audience that we need to communicate to, um, but I think, I suspect we're actually doing rather well compared to um, other PHP-based CMSs. It, uh, it seems like a surprising amount that these sites are actually already um, ahead of the curve and have moved into PHP 7. Um, Quick question, is this Drupal 8 or Drupal 7 included? This is eight only. Eight only, all right, thank you, yeah. cheers. Um, okay, and then our next update, um, we're looking at uh, reimagining the Tri Drupal program. This has been an area where uh, the initial program has, has been actually very successful for the Drupal Association and for the uh, end users uh, who it targets. It's been an opportunity to find a way to try Drupal, um, to work with a couple of partners who can create a good demo experience, but its kind of scope was limited. Uh, the original experience um, was um, a bit minimalistic. It was mostly focused on sort of free placements that were more or less ad placements for uh, doing different trials. And each of the demo experiences at the different partners has been different. So there are some inconsistencies and some things that we really think could be improved. Um, so uh, we've put together uh, concepts for the next generation of the Tri-Drupal experience that I want to cover really briefly. 
um, we're going to reuse some of that same awesome new AI, uh, UI for identifying what kind of user people are. Um, so you'll be able to choose the appropriate experience for the type of audience. So uh, those audiences are, are basically our three main personas, the marketers and team leaders, people who want to get their hands dirty like the developers, um, or people who kind of maybe may already made a decision and just need to, to get in touch with a partner. Um, so what these sorts of things will look like is an option to uh, opt in to watch uh, a demo video, which we'll be creating to show off some of the great features like Layout Builder and the Umami demo. Um, we feel that a video is just more appropriate for, for some audiences than jump, jump, dropping them right into a full, um, a full demo experience. Although there are some audiences for whom that demo experience is really powerful as well. And so what we'd like to do is create a unified demo experience um, that people opt into, um, gives them an opportunity to play around, and then still integrates those partners, but integrates those partners into the demo experience so that they can move on from the demo uh, having had that consistent introduction and then take it into uh, the partner that they may want to work with. So we're excited about this. Um, there's definitely implementation work to do. It's not something we turn around and do in a day, but we've been talking to partners um, and we think that this is going to be a great way forward. All right, finally, uh, just some board notices, of things that are under discussion. Uh, we won't be doing the like formal discussion of these items here in the public session, but there are things that we want the community in general to be aware of and to be aware that the board is aware of. So first, uh, the community working group uh, put forward a proposal for their change in charter. Um, that's something that we've been looking at and talking about uh, uh, offline and other informal conversations um, and something that we hope to have uh, additional news from the, uh, from the board soon in terms of considering that proposal, uh, possibly shortly after this meeting. Uh, and then also the governance task force put out their recommendations. Um, uh, these were basically 13 recommendations for how to further evolve community governance for Drupal. Um, I've linked both the original proposal and Dries's blog post, um, thanking the task force and outlining the elements of that proposal and, and addressing some comments there. Um, this is something that is in sort of a 30 day comment period after having been first released. Um, so we've been sitting back, seeing how the community responds to all of each of the, all of these proposals. And there's quite a mix of proposals. Some of these proposals are things that we are either sort of partly acting on already or can act on in the near term. Some of them are medium term and some of them are long term initiatives that would require some significant funding. And the task force was very transparent when they put forward these proposals that some of them were wish list items and some of them are things that we can move on quickly. Um, so we want to thank them very much for the tremendous work. Uh, it was more than a year's work really to, to put uh, all of that together. Um, and it's, uh, it's just really helpful to have that consolidation of everything that people are looking for. Yeah, Tim, I just want to add my own thanks to the, uh, to the governance task force and, and obviously to Dries as well for organizing it and, and asking that they go forward and, and work on this. And as you said, I think there are a number of, of really good ideas in there and also a number of sort of wish list items that are going to be a little bit harder to you know figure out how to implement but it, it was clearly work that was needed and i'm just and they put in a ton of time uh to give us a, a very thoughtful uh set of ideas to consider and themes that they uncovered uh, as they were talking to people in the community so you know again just want to add my own thanks to that yeah I, yeah i totally agree and i think the, just the level of compassion and care that's clear in everybody's interaction in this process has been you know really tremendous and it's something about that community that i think at times we take for granted but we have one of the most committed communities that's out there yeah i would like to echo that as well um this task force has been you know working on this weekly they've provided weekly updates and they've had multiple phone calls with them as well um, we're currently in a 30, 30 day feedback period, which is about to end actually. So, um, if we, I would recommend everybody on the board actually to go look at the documents and to read up on each of the recommendations and to, um, also read up on all of the feedback on the recommendations, because for each of the 13 recommendations, there is an issue in, uh, you know, on the, on, on Drupal.org, uh, linked from my blog post. Um, and I recommend we look at it because it actually uh, often impacts the, the Drupal Association. Um, and so it's really useful to actually take a look at that, in my opinion. Um, and I think it would be good and respectful 
to actually come back with a, with a sort of a plan of which of those 13 we feel we can move the needle on and uh, sort of what timeline we think we can do that. So I do think we need to probably huddle with a smaller group and figure out what our official response is going to be. Sort of a plan to a plan kind of response, I think would be good. Yeah, and we do, we do have some time set aside in our private session after this uh, portion of the session to do some of that initial discussion um, of those items. So we'll do that as well a little bit today. Um, let's see here. So uh, now is typically the opportunity for community Q&A. Um, now, typically with most of these meetings, we find that most people join uh, well, most people view the recording rather than join live, and especially in a December meeting, I'm not sure that we have any questions. And yeah, it looks like we haven't had any come in. So what I'm going to do is go ahead um, and uh, we'll go ahead and close public session here. Thank you all for attending. Thank all of you who have uh, um, watched this recording at a later date. Uh, the minutes and the board packet information will be posted publicly on the board section of the Drupal Association website, so you'll be able to review all of that. If you have additional questions, you can certainly reach out to me, um, and I can uh, appropriately forward any questions to the board as necessary um, or answer them myself. And uh, we really thank you for your participation and your interest in board activities. Um, and with that, we will go ahead and switch over. Um, Thank you very much, everybody.